Hi there, welcome to tutorial eight. In this case, we're going to work with an, uh, a classical case in CFD validation, uh, uh, the flow of, about uh, an airfoil to the airfoil. In this case, we're going to use the NACA 0012. And this case has a lot of validation data. Okay, so basically you can reproduce this. This these are the polar curves. So you can reproduce this curve here, and as you can see, we we have all this experimental data for leaf drag. Even there is a uh, data for 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 moment. So this is as you can imagine. Even that to the case measures will be, the measures will be small. This is not easy case okay if you are working in the linear regime okay you can capture the phenomena uh, the, the values very well but reproducing these values here in this case you you have a, a sharp stall this is not easy and this is where having a good mesh choosing the right turbulence models is very important in any case i'm going to show you how to 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 set up this case how to compare different turbulence models and a few other options so here for for your information, you have a few references. Okay, so you have the classical NASA website for tools modeling. So here you have a few, a few cases and data you, you can use to compare your case with. And then you have two references here, very inter interesting references later. I will address a little bit about this. So what we're going to do is that we have the mesh. The mesh is pre manufactured, but I'm going to show you also how to generate meshes, not precisely this one, but important is how to import the airfoil, co the airfoil, airfoil coordinates, okay? So this is what is known as C-type uh, topology mesh, okay? So this is a wall resolved mesh, it's a very good mesh, okay? So I'm not going to address the, the, the technology behind this kind of meshes, but it doesn't matter if you have quads or Tetra or triangles or whatever. Okay. Uh, something important that you should have in mind also when you set up this case, for instance, for different angles of the incidents. Okay. What you can do, you can change the angle of the airfoil and the inflow always is, it is, it is parallel to the x axis. Okay. So that there is no problem there. Or you can leave the airfoil fixed in one position. Okay. And then you change. The, the direction of the incoming flow. What is important about this is that you need to define your reference axis when computing lift and drag forces and coefficients, okay? So if your flow is horizontal and you decide to change the, the, the angle of the airfoil, you need to do pre pretty much you need to do anything. You just change it. The only thing is that you need to redo geometry and mesh. I have to say that that is the way I like to do it, okay? The other way, it is changing the angle, you no, know, the, the 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 incoming flow, the angle of the incoming flow. Okay, so the airfoil is always horizontal, and you change this angle, okay, from positive to negative, and so. So basically, what is happening? Remember that your drag force and lift forces are the drag is parallel to the incoming flow, and the lift is perpendicular to the incoming flow. So you will need to change to adjust your reference axis to compute the right forces, okay? So your simulation is still right. There is nothing wrong. The only thing is that when computing the numerical values, you need to do this small rotation when you define the leaf and drag. So we're going to see that, but be, be very careful. Do not forget to do this. Happens very often. So here you have this rotation and this reference system, now X, Y. Okay, so if you are doing this one, just take your angle of attack and put in this rotation matrix. Okay, so when, when computing lift and drag, you will put this the, 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 this, this direction vector. Okay, so we're going to, to explore that. So we have some results. So in this case, we're going to run a large Reynolds number, uh, Reynolds number and also uh, this MAC number. So the case, uh, this is a low Mach number. It is incompressible, okay, in theory, you know. But however, we're going to see the, the, how to set up also with compressor, okay? There is no problem. So here we're looking at the result for 12, 12 degrees, okay? So we have velocity, pressure, okay, Mach number, density. You see a nice solution. You see that the flow is very stable, but I, I invite you when running that switch off the auction of turbulence model and you will see how everything changes, change, okay? So when you should switch off that auction and even if you have a nice me mesh, you are not going to get the, the right results, okay? So now we look at the turbulence viscosity. Remember that here is where your turbulence model is kicking in, is adding that extra ingredient, okay, to adjust the mixing and forces 
Okay, so here we see in the wake, see that here's where the torrents model is kicking and also very close to the airfoil, you will see that you have a lot of torrents there. And then the computation of the torrents quantities. Okay, so here you have torrent kinetic energy, energy and a specific dissipation rate in specifically in this case, we're using the KL mega turbulence model. And remember that torrent viscosity, we compute these quantities just to compute this turbulent viscosity. Okay, and also remember that using this turbulence quantity, you can compute integral length scale. We already saw that. And also you can compute time scales. And this is something that people doesn't see very often, but you find, you know that you can find a right combination of these quantities and you can co compute the time scale similar to what we did with Kol Kolmogorov. And when you have that time scale, that will be kind of the turnaround time of those integral lenses. scales. You will have a very good reference of a, of a time step for your simulation if you decide to go for on a steady case. So now we look at here are the contours of viscosity ratio. This is the ratio between the molecular and turbulent viscosity and velocity vectors here with the same viscosity ratio. Okay, so see that very nicely the mesh resolves very well. But this is also another crit uh, criterion that you can use to look if you have a, a good mesh. So remember that your viscosity ratio will peak in the boundary layer. Okay, so see that you have the boundary close to the walls. No? So see that it's peaking here in this region. So this means that you need to have a good mesh here. So when you plot, you do these plots and you see that you are resolving well, you, you, you can be sure that this will give you good result. Instead, you have a large transition here when the viscosity rate is peaking here. It means that you will need a, a better mesh okay, to control that, that, that transition. Okay. So sometimes it will happen with structured meshes that you might have one cell there. That's not good. So in this case, we have a nice progression. And here we see the velocity vectors. Okay. So see that you have the boundary layer very close to the walls. Okay. So the wall will add this gradient normal to the wall, this velocity gradient that is resolved there. So in this case, in theory, we should have at 12 degrees, we should have some separation here in the back. We don't see, again, is the turbulence model, model that is kicking in, probably using some other models like transition to turbulence. We might have that separation here. Later, we're going to study that. But in any case, we, we, we get good results. Then when we run the simulation, okay, we see the behavior here of the, our residuals and our uh, integral quantities, the coefficients. As, as I have said so far that sometimes these residuals can be very misleading. Okay, so if you look at these residuals and then compare with these integral quantities, maybe these residuals might be telling you that you have a good convergence or whatever, how, how, however you inter interpret this. But look at that at the beginning, you have a strong unsteadiness, okay, at the beginning. And then it is damped by the but by the turbulence model are uh, also by the solver and then everything is smooth okay so this is why it's better to look at this quantity so probably here we can say that already 140 okay we can stop because we have reached here and a steady state behavior okay and statistically steady there are no oscillations instead as you look at 140 you will see that it's still your residuals is you set your convergence here to 10 to the minus 4, you see that probably you might not have arrived to that value. Instead, by looking at this one, you're already there. But in any case, you can let it run for a little while. But the main the main takeaway here is that do not rely solely in these quantities in the, in the residuals because they can be very misleading computes and other quantities of interest. Again, also, we can plot on the airfoil surface Okay, we can plot the y plus distribution and here the pressure coefficient distribution. Okay, the standard distribution. And see that this is a very fine mesh. See that the y plus is below one all over the airfoil surface. And then we compare with experimental results. So we have experimental numerical values here for this specific angle of, of incidence, okay, of attack. And see that this is experimental lead, drag and lift. And we have a very good agreement. It's below 5% that usually is that value that you would will, you will use, no, the, the, the margin of error. But uh, it's important to mention also that experiments, they are not the, the absolute truth, okay? So yes, many times you are going to use experiment, but remember that those experiments also are subject to uncertainty. It may happen that they can be run Okay, as we are going to see in the last lecture, I'm going to show you something. So see that in this case, 
we're sure that the experiments are right. However, the actual value measure in the experiment was 12.12. .12. It might have a small or large difference, who knows, but see that the actual value measure. So here I'm comparing for 12 degrees and again, any further difference that we're going to have in the result might be due to this. Okay. And those are uncertainties that you need to check. You need to, to look what is, what, what, what is happening. Okay. In your, in your experimental results. Again, also something that is very important that, uh, you need to check that in this case, we need to do a matching between the Reynolds number and the Mach number, okay? Because when we, the, the test was done in, in the wind tunnel, everything was a scale. So the, there is a machine here and that wind tunnel is a pressurized one. Okay, so we only, we need to know the right properties for the pressure or the right temperature to set up that. So just to show you that there is, later we're going to, to talk about that, but there is a, a machine that you can do, okay? between those two quantities. Okay. So this is the machine that you will do, you know, your Mach number, Reynolds number. Okay. You substitute in your equation, then put your equation of a state, put it here, and then you're going to get, okay, this equation in this equation. Okay. You put all your quantities, then you have the viscosity that also depends in temperature. Okay. So in this case, we, this is the Sutherland law. Okay, so you compute according to your temperature and then you can compute your pressure. Okay, and for instance, for this combination, you will see that your wind tunnel is pressurized. Okay, it's, it's almost twice the atmospheric pressure that you need to run it to, to get those values. Okay, so see, put Reynolds here, your viscosity here. This is a specific gas constant, specific air constant, temperature, the Mach number. This is the reference lens on gamma 1.4 for air. Usually we work for with there. Okay. So these are things that you also have to take into account. And then also something that you have to take into account when you look at your results and here also I would share with you the, these papers. Okay. So this is a very nice paper and there is plenty of numerical data, but, but what you have to consider here is that CFDs look at here that we're looking at CD zero in, fun in function. This is the coefficient in function of the Reynolds number. See that there are, these are experiments and let's say these are good experiments. See that you have two different behaviors. One following this line and this another group of simulation following this line. So, but what, what we have here is in this one, okay, this is natural transition and this is force transition. Okay. So here you let the transition in a natural way now from laminar to, to, to turbulent. And here you force the transition. Okay. You perturb the flow and see that there is a, a significant difference. And what is important is that look at your experimental data. It happened very often that you take your data and that data, it is for natural transition. Okay. And CFD correlates better with forced transition with this line is you want to resolve this one natural transition. You will use very specific turbulence models for transition to turbulence. Okay. But generally speaking, CFD data correlates better with for transition. So these are things also that you need to take into account when conducting the simulation. As you see, it's not only just putting values, then you need to analyze your data. And let me go and open another reference here. Okay, so this one will be the second one. Okay, so in this one, you will have tables with all the values. So you go below here and you see that you have here all your force and actually these are the, the, the values that I'm taking now for, for this validation. And see that you have force coefficient, free transition. And see that you have your values and as you keep reading your data you will see that now you will have here forced transition okay so here you are perturbating the flow so always pay attention to your data because it's not the same okay so that being said i think this is all for the introduction of the case so we're going to to do a lot in this turbulence in, in this turbulence modeling tutorial uh the next video i'm going to show you uh how to read in the airflow coordinates okay if you would like to do the mesh however remember i'm going to give you the mesh already prepared okay that's all thank you for attention see you next time bye